Hello, hello, hello. Hi everybody. What a day it's been. It's been crazy, but I'm so happy to be here. We made it. It's nearly the weekend. We can exhale a big deep breath. Um, it's a real honor for me to have been invited to this platform to host this workshop with you all. Thank you to everybody joining. Wow, there's loads of you. Um, thank you so much. To tell you a bit about myself, sorry, I'm like this because I also set up the camera so that you can see what I'm going to do afterwards. Um, so my name is Chrissa Amwa. I am a textile designer and my work is inspired by the Adinkra symbols of Ghana, which is where my family is from. And um, for those that may not be familiar, there are hundreds of Adinkra symbols and they've existed for centuries. And their whole function and purpose is to encourage our personal well-being and social harmony. And given what Black Minds Matter is doing, given the way the world is right now, I just think that there's something incredibly powerful with returning to our roots, if you like. I'm, you know, I'm not a psychologist or anything like that, and I don't want to get preachy at all, but for me, that's what I know that Adinkra does for me. It's been a very empowering way for me to communicate my language of design um, in a contemporary context. So that just gives a brief summary of Adinkra and me. Um, we haven't got that much time. I'm going to squeeze into 20 or so minutes what I normally work with people um, in over two hours to achieve. So what I'm going to do is just basically introduce you to techniques on how you can design. And I always say, and I learned this when I was studying, I studied textile design at the Chelsea College of Art and Design. And one of the things that I took away from that experience is when you learn the rules, you can break the rules. So I'm gonna just give you a few pointers in the right directions to get you rule learning so that you can go off and break rules as um, suits you. Today's workshop is the Amwa Designs tote bag workshop. Now you can actually apply this to any fabric surface that you want. I did um, another live earlier this week and we it, we it was just about creating an art piece. You could use the same techniques to apply to clothing if you want. Um, the one thing I will say is that if you are going to work on something that you are going to wear, um, I would encourage you to, if it's brand new, to wash it first because usually um, fabrics are, have a coated film on them when they're brand new and you just want to make sure that when you're applying your pigment it receives the colour in the best way. So that's my top tip for starters. With a tote bag you don't need to worry about washing it first or if you were creating an art piece I wouldn't worry about washing it. Um, I'm going to teach you some top tips. If anyone's got any questions I'll be looking at the camera from time to time and drop me your questions questions and um, so let's get started let's get this party going so um, I mentioned Adinkra and um, I feel very close to the camera um, and I have chosen this is my Adinkra dictionary um, by W Bruce Willis so if you want to refer to that well, there's lots of information online as well but um as i mentioned that there are hundreds of adinkra symbols but i've chosen two for today i normally it depends on the design it depends what i'm doing um oh i was supposed to do something here let me quickly do this because i do not want to lose any brownie points there we go a step-by-step -step guide so for those logging in now you know what we're doing um, so excited I got straight into things. So I've chosen two Adinkra symbols and you know what, so long as you know the meaning, I think that's what's most important. I often abstract these symbols in my own design. Um, you can apply them literally if you go to Ghana, if any of you ever go to Ghana, you'll see them embossed onto people's walls or in furniture pieces and that sort of thing. So, you know, have fun with it. But so I, the way I look at it is that so long as you know the meaning and it gives you that source of empowerment, then that's the most important thing. So. The two symbols I've chosen today, the first one is Akuma, which means heart, and it is in, that's the original symbol shape, in a heart shape, and I think the heart speaks to a universal language, but here it says, the heart is a symbol of love, goodwill, patience, 
faithfulness, fondness, endurance, and consistency. And most, or if not all, Adinkra symbols have a proverb with them. And this proverb says, um, it says, take heart, be patient, nyakoma. So that's one of my um, Adinkra symbols for today. And the next one is shushemudra, which is a bit more of a tongue twister for me. Um, but, so this is the original symbol. And what it means is it's referred to as a searching rod or a measuring rod or a ruler. So a symbol of excellence, superior quality, perfection, knowledge, and critical examination. Now it speaks to the concept of excelling. And I think, especially given the climate that we're in, I'm going to choose to interpret that in a way that means excelling the best doing the best that you can do so it's not always going to be your best or the best but if it's the best in that moment I think that's good enough and that should you know we should be happy with that sometimes there's too much pressure on us to for this seeking this idea of perfection so we are seeking to do the best that we can do in the 20 minutes or so that we have um, to create something pretty. Now, I often do textile workshops and I will be converting them just due to COVID restrictions to an online format. So these are just sometimes, these are techniques that I've demonstrated in previous classes before. So things like this, you know, sometimes mark making complements the Adinkra symbols. Like I said, they don't always have to be literal, but you know, and often some of these shapes and patterns I have made with household objects. So this is another one that I've made. So literally just to get us started. Now I have, so you want to start with, I did list um, the things that you will need. Um, what I think is it's best to watch me and then to get a sense of what you can or should do and then go off, go forth and conquer. So after you've watched this and you can refer back to the materials list, then go forth and do what you've got to do. So I get my, this is one of my, can you see it? This is what the Instagrammers do, don't they? They put their hands behind it. Um, this is um, a copper colour and I get my fabric pigments and most of my materials from um, the London Graphic Centre, which is I think London's largest stationery and arts um, shop and um, they're based in Covent Garden and I I have an exclusive discount code so if you head on to my Instagram stories after this I'll share it with you and if, you know if you're buying any of the products that I've listed or anything else um, you can get yourself 15% off so that's very kind of the London Graphics um, Centre to do so I have chosen two colours for today's um, workshop and um, the first color is this green color can you see it it's an almost emeraldy there's a slight um glittery uh, finish to it gloss or pearlesque i should say pearlesque effect to it so let me and as i said right i'm going to position the camera so that you can see more of the tote bag so what i've done is i've stretched it out normally i would work on a flat surface but this is raised so that you can see what i'm doing and um i so what you want to do is you want to fix i've used masking tape to fix my fabric to what i'm working you don't want it moving around um and also again just because it's propped up i've fixed my stencils that i i've made myself um but normally this would all be flat now, um, I've used manila paper, again, from the sh um, store that I just mentioned, but um, I've made all of these stencils myself. So you need a scalpel and a ruler and a firm hand. And, you know, you could use scissors. It depends on the shape that you're trying to create. But, um, you know, use tracing paper maybe to transfer the shape that you want. Use a ruler. And the great thing about this is that they can be reused. As you can see, I've got pigment already on them. So starting with the green colour that I just showed you, I like to add a bit of water because what you want to do, now there's no such thing as a mistake in textile design. You can always, that's the beauty of handmade, right? We're not machines, we're not computers. So you can always build layers. So I add a little bit of water just so that it's thinner 
and that I can build my layers. And what you want, oops, let me show you. You don't want your brush or whatever your application tool is. I'm starting with a brush, but I'm gonna show you other tools that you can use. You don't want it to be too wet because if it's too wet, it is going to seep under your stencil and not create a very crisp image. Unless you don't want a crisp image, then that's fine. But, um, so I've wiped the excess off. I'm just gonna dab a little bit on my tissue here as well and I am going to start here now I'm going to start very lightly and um, one thing that textile design taught me is to have patience I'm not naturally a very patient person but I learned when I was studying textile design that you know it's 95% of it is in preparation if you try and um, cheat or take shortcuts you will pay for it later so this is a nice thing about this is that it forces you, like I said, when I started, it's been a mad day today and this is just forcing me to calm down, catch my breath um, and go from there. So I've done that very lightly. Now I could keep building until it was a more solid colour, but I think that is going to work for me. Um, let me apply the same colour here. Now you'll notice I'm using the brush in a different direction and that just moves against the grain of the, that's not the right word, but of the fabric gently. And then just to create a bit of abstraction, I have um, placed the Shushia Mudra symbol stencil that I've made um, overlapping the square. The square doesn't mean anything. It's not a, an Adinkra symbol, but it gives a nice template and shape for me to work with. Um, what I should have also said is that whenever you're starting a design, if you're not sure, just play with your composition. How does it look when you put everything down on the um, fabric? You know, I've started top left. I don't like symmetry so much. So if you ever look at my design, there's slightly something off balance about them. I just think it's, for me, it's a bit too obvious when things are so obviously symmetrical. So I'm just going to go over this again in layers. So there we are. So um, you, it would also be worth learning or looking up colour theory. Um, so that some people may not, you may know, but not be completely aware that so you have your primary colours, so primary colours being red, uh, yellow and blue. I always feel like I'm being tested when I do this. And um, from your primary colours, you can make any other colour. So two primary colours make a secondary colour. So, for example, yellow and blue make green, um, red and yellow make orange. And what haven't I said? Blue and red make purple. Um, I always feel like I'm being tested and from that you get your secondary colours and from two secondary colours you get tertiary colours and so on and when you learn about colour theory, you learn the science of colour I guess, you can then um, go into complementary colours and how, you know, how to make colours pop and, and enhance one another and work well as schemes. Um, Green and red are actually complementary colours to one another, but I always avoid them just because it looks so obviously Christmas-like. So that's one example. Now, here in the corner, I don't know if you can see this bit properly. So, um, hi everybody joining. I hope you're enjoying it. Like I said, if you have any questions, please ask me. So again, I said that I don't like things too symmetrical. I've put Akoma, the symbol that represents the heart, here in the corner, but I'm not gonna apply pigment to it first. Now, I don't know if anyone knows anything about wax resist and batik work, but where you apply wax, and it doesn't have to be wax, I'll show you something else you can use, you are creating a barrier between the pigment and the fabric, so it's not going to, it's gonna have a bit of texture to it and receive it in a different way. Now, look around your house, you don't have to buy everything. This is a actually a very beautiful vanilla scented candle, but if I rub this here, and what I'll do is I'll complete this tote bag after the workshops. Oops, see I've got a bit of movement there just because I'm, not completely flat on um, horizontal, but this is going to create a barrier between the pigment and the fabric. So I am 
actually going to, I'm going to work with the same colour actually, I'm going to work with the green again. So, and I'll sh and what you want to do is I'll show afterwards in my stories, but you want to remove the wax. Firstly, to fix any kind of colour or pigment, it usually requires heat. Now, depending on the fabric, that could be steam or ironing. For this, it will be ironing. And by fixing, what I mean is that so that when you wash it, the colour doesn't run. It's going to stay. You don't want to be carrying your tote bag out in the rain and then the colour's just dripping um, down you. So, but to remove the wax, what you'll do is you'll cover it with newspaper and iron it, and then the newspaper absorbs the wax from the fabric. So, there's that. So, that's going to have a textured effect when we finish. Now, I am apart from the candle, there are things like this. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but it's called the art masking fluid. And again, this is can be applied in a similar way. When it dries, you could either, if I wanted to color on top of the green, for example, I could put it on top and then wait for it to dry, or wait for it to dry, put, maybe I want to do a fancy pattern that doesn't cover all of the green, and then I do that, and then when this is dry, I peel it off and it won't, it will have acted as a barrier from where, wherever I don't want that pigment to go. So there's that that you can also use, art masking fluid. Um, I am going to move this around now. So you're gonna see, it's not dry yet, but can you see there, oops. Can you see where the pigment went around this stencil? So I'm using positive and negative stencils there. Oops, I need a cameraman. Um, <laughs> so there's this, so let's play with that, shall we? Let's see what happens. So having some connection. And then let's create, so we're creating closed spaces now. This is where it's gonna get tricky. Like I said, if I was working on a flat surface, it would be slightly easier. Don't fail me now. So I'm just using, I, you wouldn't normally have to do this, but just because of the position that I'm in. Um, what am I making? It is a tote bag and um, just playing. We, we are having fun, um, not taking it too seriously. Um, what I want to do actually is, um, it's an Adinkra inspired tote bag. So just a pattern that would make me happy to carry this. Um, as I'm out and about. Now, I don't want the colour to go over what I've just done. So, I did say masking fluid, but just for the sake of time, I'm using masking tape to create a barrier so it doesn't affect what I'm about to do. So, this is the other colour I've chosen. I've chosen this copper colour. So, again, like I said, I don't want my... Um, application tool to be too too damp so removing the excess I'm use I've used brushes afterwards I'll show you what you can do with a sponge so just quickly I'm mindful of time I think I'm hopefully I'm okay with time and Nome will tell me to wrap it up but can you see that sorry I'm trying to again See, it's because there's not a lot of excess, so you have to be patient, build up layers. You could go in full throttle, but then there's just the um, chance that you may ha seep. Your lines won't be as crisp. So... getting really into this because it's been such a mad day and it's very calming and like I said there's no such thing as a mistake you just do oops we have a moving stencil you just do to the best of your ability and you practice and if you feel confident that um if you don't feel confident of what you want to do get if you can get some scrap fabric first practice on that 
before you go in. Just want the colour a bit more even here. So, here we go. This has got a nice sheen to it. I don't know if you're seeing it, but hopefully you're... Oops. See, I, I didn't... T I've got too much pigment here, so now we're going to have a bit of a bleed, but it's all part of the process, isn't it, right? Doing the best that we can in this moment. Now, if you ever... Actually, while I'm doing that... If, for example, I've applied too much pigment there and I'm really worried because it's just too much excess, get a kitchen tissue, rub it or pat it and peel it. Don't drag it, peel it off and you see it grabs the excess. So top tip there. Now let's see what is happening underneath. And you want to be careful, peel it off. Okay, do you see where it bled there? So actually that's a good example of when it's, um, when, yeah, it wasn't as tight on the fabric and there was too much on the, um, what's it called, on the um, brush. So let me show you what else you can do. So you don't always have to use a brush, you could use your fingers, Child, you know, people do, when you're kids, do you remember when you used to do hand painting and finger painting? Let's create some layers and texture so, using the Akuma, which is heart, now I'm going to use a sponge. So, just an ordinary sponge that I have lying around the house. And again, it's about building layers. This one requires a bit more patience, but working to the same principle, just dabbing. So for those that may have just joined us, my designs are inspired by the Adinkra symbols of Ghana, which have existed for hundreds of years, and there are hundreds of them. And their whole function and purpose is to encourage personal well-being and social harmony, So, which I think is very fitting for what Black Minds Matter does and is seeking to achieve. And just, you know, given the state of the world right now, I think we should all be looking after our well-being and looking after one another as best as we can also. So that's with a sponge. And again, I could just keep going and build layers. So that's that. And, you know, look for things around your house. So let's peel this off and see where we're at. Okay. So, okay, we're building. Um, this, I bought some mangoes the other day and Egg, things like egg cartons, mangoes, they're really great. So I don't know if you can see, but this has got really nice textured um, finish to it. But only because it's so curved, I'm not going to be able to get all of it on. But hopefully, I should be able to get this bit on. So let's have a play with that. Let's go with the copper again. And then... So I'm going to paint around the edges. And again, all depends on what kind of effect you want as to what the finish may be. I've not tried this, so this is just an experiment, but we get the gist. We're here to have fun and to play. Right, where the pigment isn't is, well, it's not going to, um, what's the word, make contact with the fabric. So I'm actually going to, I like building layers. I'm going to see if I can overlap with Akuma. So, can you see that? So, I'm just using my finger to sort of press it down to make sure I get as much contact as possible. Okay, let's see, fingers crossed. Okay, it's very light and textured, but it makes a point. Everything doesn't have to be so bold and blunt, so that's fine, we will leave that there. We will come back to something else. Um, Let's see. This I have lying around. This is a piece of vinyl and it's got pigment residue on from other things that I've done. Um, this is really pretty and I like this. So let's take the copper again, apply it. So I'm just showing you different things, like literally anything that can make a mark or a pattern is good to be used, I think. So starting in the corner, 
I'm gonna I'm not just gonna plonk it down, I'm gonna put it down carefully. Again, rub it. And then peel it off. There, can you see that? It's not as I'll show it afterwards, but it gives a nice finish. It's really nice, but I'll show you what you know when I say creating textures and layers. For example, the square that we already have going over here, I can overlap some of it. Let me see. Peel. And see there, that's where the pigment was heaviest, where it's, um, but again, it's all part of the effect, right? And then I'm going to show you one last trick. Now, this one's a bit tricky. Do you know the mesh that we get sometimes some of our fruit in? So, now this one needed to not move as much. Let's see, have I got some masking tape that I can hold it with? Again, normally you'd be working on a flat surface, so you wouldn't encounter these technical situations, but it is all good. So it's just a bit of there. And I just want to create something over this part to overlap. Um, so there we go. So I'm going to use the green because we are countering. So this was the green again. taking off the excess because because the lines are very thin between the mesh this will seat very easily hello to everyone that's joining I'm gonna try patting it and seeing if that works because again if I was lying flat it would be easier to control this so Again, very gently. Very gently. Okay. This is a bit more difficult to achieve, but I just want to give you ideas so that you can go off. So it's a bit more blotchy, but it's fine because we're building layers and we are building texture. So, I'm not sure how we're doing for time, but that was what I'm just making sure I haven't forgotten anything, but that was most of it. I'm going to keep working on this. I'm going to record it and then I'll show it in my, um, sorry, <laughs> I'll share it in my story so that you see the great masterpiece it becomes. But what we're going to do is keep working on it, creating layers and that sort of thing. I've even got, when I said household items, things like wine corks, wine top bottles or, you know, different things um i'll keep working on it show it show you what it becomes and then if you have any questions about technique or practice but the whole idea is to create something that you love and enjoy and enjoy the process of making and also if you've invested time in making it you're not going to just throw it away and we're trying to move away from being a throwaway society so this is why i think you know the tote bags are a really good thing to get into so I don't see any questions, but I want to thank everyone so much for joining and I will see you on the other side. Thank you so much to Black Minds Matter. Oh, and don't forget, so there's a whole series of um, amazing people taking part in these lives. And I believe Sharon Walters, who is a collage artist, will be doing a workshop on um, the art of paper cutting. So definitely look out for the schedule for that and tune in for that. But thank you so much, everybody. Have a lovely and peaceful evening. Take care. Bye bye.